One of the most lobbied bills last year at the state capitol is going for another round. A new bill introduced in the state senate would give physician assistants more leeway in treating patients. The goal is to expand health care access in the not so populated parts of Colorado. However, this new bill is still getting pushback. Tonight, I'm taking a 360 look at who this bill would help and why some lawmakers think it gives physician assistants too much freedom. I know at this point in my life, I cannot afford another child. Heather Sissenstein is a single mom to a seven-year-old daughter. She's been getting care for years from a physician assistant she's grown to love in the rural southeastern Colorado town of Lamar. She went to her doctor to get an IUD for birth control. Unfortunately, at that time, she was not able to do so. She was turned away. Her previous supervisor was stepping out, and somebody else was now her supervisor who did not have the certification or knowledge to do that. She found another doctor who could, but it isn't covered through insurance. Her only option, travel to Pueblo several times, a two hour drive each way. Thank goodness I was able to get that taken care of over the summer. Otherwise, I would have been pulling my child out of school for that. She will still have to go back for a checkup once a year. It's people like Heather who Colorado Senator Cleve Simpson wants to help. Parts of my rural district have lost population in the last decade. Part of that then drives access to doctors, that direct supervision, out and makes life complicated, sometimes for my constituencies and for my physician's assistants that are providing, again, quality, affordable health care to them. Let's lay out the problem. According to the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, there are currently no physicians or physician assistants practicing in Cheyenne, Costilla, Crowley, Jackson, Mineral, and San Juan counties. There's not a single physician assistant in Bent, Custer, and Phillips counties, and no physicians in Hinsdale, Kiowa, and Washington counties. Simpson and fellow state senator Faith Winter are sponsoring legislation that, if passed, would allow physician assistants to do more. So this is about allowing physician's assistants to provide the care they've been trained to do through collaborative agreements that make sense in our current healthcare setting. Right now, physician assistants can prescribe medications, including controlled substances, and they can diagnose for conditions as well as manage those conditions. And they have to do it under the supervision of a physician. This legislation would allow them to practice without that supervision eventually. This bill requires 3,000 hours of supervised training. And if they're changing, what their practice is, if they're learning a new skill, then it's an additional 3,000 hours. But there's a change from the legislation first introduced in 2021 and again in 2022. We're making it explicitly clear this year that they cannot be a majority owner in any practice, which means they cannot run their own practice without a physician. Lawmakers hope third time's the charm. We're really trying to improve access to all Coloradans. Ron Rossis is a physician assistant based in Denver. So if this bill would pass, how would it personally impact you? I think the biggest thing for me is making sure that the skills that I have acquired over my almost 20 years of experience transfer with me no matter where I go in the future. For some context, the American Academy of Physician Assistants says 17 states and the District of Columbia allow a physician assistant like Racis to practice under collaboration rather than supervision. North Dakota, Utah and Wyoming take it a step further and do not even require that collaborative agreement. But not even those from the same party agree with this approach. I'm an ER nurse myself. I work with PAs on a daily basis and, and and uh, I, I truly appreciate the work they do. ER nurse and state senator Kyle Mollica is one of them. When you look at physician assistants, um, it's in their title. They're a physician assistant and they, they go to school to be generalists. Uh, they don't go to school for specialties. That lack of specialty is something Mollica says he brought up last year. His biggest concern is patient safety. Collaboration is not oversight. What I am interested in seeing is, is that oversight to make sure that there is a backstop, to make sure that, uh, that we have that level of expertise uh, when it comes to caring for our patients. Malika says he feels for patients who have to travel long distances, 
but thinks there are other ways to address this issue. I think that we need to have that conversation of uh, do we incorporate more telehealth for that oversight? Do we incorporate that maybe a, maybe a PA doesn't have to just work under one physician, they can work under a number of physicians and have those, those relationships. Groups like the Colorado Medical Society and the Colorado Chapter of the American College of Emergency Physicians both stressed they believe in physician-led care teams. CMS's president saying in part, quote, Every day we see the benefits of those teams with our patients, including our valued work of physician assistants. While we have not seen language on a bill for 2023 and therefore don't have a position, our hope is that together we can address the Colorado Association of Physician Assistants concerns. The Colorado ACEP is saying in part, quote, teams led by board certified emergency physicians are preferred by patients because they consistently deliver higher quality, less costly care. Care. Physician assistants are an integral part of physician-led teams, and we support simplifying the administrative requirements for oversight of PAs by physicians in Colorado. <laughs> Heather Sissenstein hopes this is the year for change so she can take that four-hour round-trip journey off her already busy to-do list. It's extremely frustrating to have to spend that expense just to be able to get to health care. I, I would not call that affordable health care, that's for sure. And going in depth now, it's not just rural communities facing a lack of health care options. There's a new trend of hospitals shutting down in several major inner cities. Many of those communities are low income with a large African-American population. Atlanta is one of the cities hit the hardest. It now only has a single level one trauma center in the entire metro area. My heart was devastated for the community to know that they wouldn't have access to health in this area. People have been here for generations. With it now being gone, it's going to be a plight in the community of health care and access. That Lone Trauma Center says the closures are having a negative effect on its standard of care. It's reporting a massive influx of patients in its emergency and trauma centers, causing long wait times for patients before they can be seen.